I'm recording. Let's send me a refresher page. Yeah, just tell me when you see it. It should be live now. Yep, I'm seeing it on mine. I think we're good. I'm going to take the chat box, put it in a pop out. Then I'm going to put, open up your, open up a full stream like this. Sure. Uh, which side are you going to put your, I mean, does it make any difference to you which side uh, the chat box is, uh, is on? Uh, I have it brought up on a separate laptop right next to my computer. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to read it off that way. I, I only have one monitor actually. Yeah, so, yeah. So I can't even bring it up on my screen, especially since I'm going to have the, the uh, feats and stuff on uh, full screen here. Okay, sorry. Close this. Okay. And go back to this. And take this one. Sorry. If anyone's here yet in chat, let me know if the volume levels are okay. You can hear me and Albar. I think we have a few people who joined already. You gotta do that, right? Yeah. Gotta do what? Type something in the chat. Oh, okay. Yep. Just checking if it's working. Second. Okay, I'm going to pull this um, starting scene screen off so everyone can see me. All right, I think we've got enough people here to at least get started. We've got, what, six people? Seven people now. Okay, what's up, everybody? I know I never, I never exactly stream uh, very much, but Albar had a cool idea where he came up with a bunch of different uh, game mechanics and new feats and a new enhancement tr enhancement tree that he came up with called Spirit of the Vampire. So what we're gonna do in this uh, stream today is we're just gonna we're just gonna go through it and talk about it, and I I hope that some of you can chime in on chat and. You know, give your ideas and critiques and thoughts as well. Uh, so, Albar, do you want to start by just telling people who you are and what you do on YouTube? Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for the introduction. Um, I started a YouTube channel sometime, like, a little bit more than a year ago when I started to get serious about it. The channel's name is Aldbar DDO. Um, I mainly do, like, tutorials and walkthroughs of quests. I think I'm capitalizing on solo walkthrough and guide where I try to go through all the details in every quest and point out everything. So if you want to do it yourself, you can follow along and I show everything that there is to do in the quest and try to, you know, make it entertaining, putting nice background music and making sure it looks smooth and feels good. Uh, I also do some other tutorials of other like little quests, uh, other like crafting and certain different things. I've got a few build guides and some other stuff. So if you, it sounds interesting, you can check out my uh, YouTube channel, Oddbar DDO. Um, to this, this, this event we're doing right now, um, one second, I'll turn up my mic. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it sounded a little bit soft. Yeah. We were talking about that before we started. Yeah, Albar, if you can, just turn your, now? turn your mic up a little bit. Is Nick, I, I'll stop talking. I just want to know if, it's, if the volume is right before I keep on going. Uh, can you turn up a little bit more? I can't hear too much of a difference. How about now? It sounds better to me. You all in chat, let me know, because it's hard okay. for me, it's hard for me to tell because I'm not you know I'm obviously not watching the stream. Um, yeah, sure. I am a participant. Okay. I probably just should try to talk a little louder versus falling asleep standing, but I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, fine. Um, well, you guys just let okay. me know if, if, he, if he's too soft, just tell us in chat. Okay, so we've got one person at least saying that you sound fine. Okay, well. Uh, uh, but yeah, any... 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was saying before about the, this project is um, I'm a bit of a game designer. Um, I haven't worked in it professionally, but uh, I, it's definitely my passion. So putting all this stuff out was kind of stuff that I work on all the time anyways. I think about ideas and concepts for the game all the time. So I was thinking of putting it together in a compilation and making some feats and having this collaboration with uh, Axel to see what he has to say about it. So Yeah, and I you did a really good job. Like, how did you, like, as you all can see on the screen, we're going to go through, like, some PowerPoints he drew up. And he did, you, you did this in the format of, you know, DDO's, uh, I guess, kind of like a, like you would see in game when we get to the, you'll see it better when we get to the enhancement tree and stuff. But how did you do that? Did you just pull the art from the wiki or something? Well, I started with pulling old art from the wiki. I took basically, I went through the, like the DDO planner. The, I went through and I ripped tons of different like art from, uh, the, if you go through the DDO planner, there's actually folders over there that have all the art. So it's all in one gigantic list. And That's some of the stuff idea. I went and just pull, pulled off the website, the wiki. And then I just modified it, PowerPoint, Photoshop, whatever I needed to do to, I wanted to look like it belongs in the actual game and then just made it modified to fit whatever was on screen at the same time. So that's basically what you're seeing right now is um, stuff that all looks like it belongs in this presentation because it kind of does. It was just like modified versions of other things and mm. it w you could look at it and it would you would relate to it right away. So that's basically what I did and I put it all together in PowerPoint and uh, you'll see when you get to the enhancement that's... tree, I actually made the thing work. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, we'll get started, I guess, with the, some of the feats you came up with. So here, as you guys can see on the screen, some sneak feats you came up with. So let's see. So with these feats, do you want to explain what you're going for with the sneak, these new sneak feats you came up with? Yeah, well, some time ago, somebody asked me to do a solo walkthrough and guide, a stealth version of Claw of Old Core. Now, I don't really play stealth characters. I didn't have a character who could do it. So I rolled up a character and basically built them on the spot to make one video. And when I was doing it, I got to experience for the first time some of the stealth mechanics. And there were certain things that just made it feel like, yeah, this is not something I'm going to play long time. And I was trying to think what could I do to improve it. And I'm sure there's other players who, who don't play stealth for the same reason. So that's what I'm trying to make some kind of other feats to make uh, stealth more engaging for players who are not just sold on it the way it is so that's what i came up over here so these are two new feats yeah and, uh, and i know stealth is something that a lot of players really would like to see um expanded more although i think you know one of the big reasons they don't is just balance issues i think that some of these feats here so i think the first one here you have um plus 10 percent movement speed while sneaking uh, you can no longer break stealth when doing non-combat actions, such as pulling levers, opening doors, or break or doing breakables. And you have some requirements here. I think, and then the next feed, I think, is just another additional 10%. I think the speed is pretty cool and would, would be something that I think some people would take on, I guess, flavor, flavor builds or people who really like to go and sneak and do assassinate and all that. I think that the you no longer break stealth when doing non-combat actions, I don't think that that would be... Probably not be be a good idea just because balance reasons, like in lag reasons also. I mean, they, I, I'm pretty sure one of the reasons they put in things like doors at regular intervals throughout quests is they want to players, they want to force players out of stealth uh, just to kill mobs because they really intend you to kill the mobs and they don't want you sneaking past like all the monsters in the dungeon and causing a lot of lag and stuff. So I think that's really the only, like the main issue like, I would have. But I, like I see what you're going for though. Um, and I, I know that a lot of players would love to play a lot of a lot of quests, just straight stealth. But I don't know. I, I think that th there would be issues with that um, in DDO. I think generally they okay. want you to kill, like they generally want you to kill the stuff, <laughs> you know, in each uh, each room you go into. So, but I mean, I think it's a cool idea though. It's just I don't know how it would be, how it would be workable. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, no, I'm saying there is a whole different aspect of ddo of not killing anything you get extra 10 percent true x before it so i mean there is such an aspect in the game again i don't know if it will work all the time and like you're saying could be just passing by monsters and learning every alerting everything and yeah having a gigantic lag spike because of it could be it's not practical yeah but if it would be any kind of a way that you could make it so it would be a little bit more you know accessible for players who don't want to have you know 
like the, the most minor thing breaks your stuff automatically that's what i was thinking about. yeah well it is annoying like i like like uh just certain things that don't let you do certain non-combat actions like if you have like divine punishment picking on not uh, ticking on you from a mob or something like things like that can be really annoying so yeah i see where you're coming from okay well i guess we'll move to the next one here then um you came up with a feat called endless dragon mark all dragon mark uses regenerate at a rate of one every 180 seconds can't be taken as a class feat so you want to talk about your idea for that just like i i like the idea that dragon marks be expanded because I, I don't see a lot of people using them i mean some people do but um you know i'm getting a few people in chat saying you're still really quiet albar can you maybe turn your mic up a little bit well, I turned up the mic uh, well as hard as it's going. So oh, I'm really? Sure. I mean, um, I may, I maybe I have to change the settings and do you guys want to wait for a minute and uh, one second? I can try. I mean, I could try turning myself down, but that well, would help. Turn yourself down and turn both of us up. So let me see. Sorry about this. No problem. Let me. Uh, yeah. Hold on, guys. here i can turn you up a little bit okay i turned you up like 20 percent once you start talking okay. is so that as long as i don't hit the red bar at the end then yeah like, you're, you're not hitting it yet is does that okay. sound better guys because if this doesn't work i don't really know what else to do <laughs> yeah sorry here i'll turn it up a little bit more we got one option how about now Chat, does, does it sound it okay? Sense? Okay, well, I turned you up, so hopefully, you know, hopefully it sounds better. But I guess we'll we'll just continue on. We'll find out soon. Yeah, <laughs> we'll find out soon. Um, I think yeah. Jake says has a comment in chat. He said, I would like to see the feats require a certain number of hide or move silently ranks as these are both skills related to sneaking. Um, ah, you mean it, as set requirements for taking them? Yeah, that might, would make sense yeah, also. Yeah, that might make sense. Oh, I'm, re I'm really loud now? Me or Albar? By the end of the by the end of this uh, stream, we'll get it right. <laughs> yeah, we'll try. Am, am I too loud now, guys? Let me know. If not, I'm just going to continue on. I didn't turn my mic up. I only turned up. Check. I only turned up his. Yeah, mine mine's at the same level, so I shouldn't be any louder. Um, but okay. Let's move on to the dragon marked feet. So, like like I was saying, I think that dragon marks. They definitely could use some help, just because I, I don't see a lot of people using them in game. Yeah, I think the problem with dragon marks is that you get a few chargers, and then you, you suffer either. For, you have like a foam mode; you don't want to use it, and you're like, I, I need to save this for like a specific time, and then you end up not using it at all. Yeah. And it just, just, it just because you don't use it so it's not fun and a lot of things you might get more mileage out i mean the one that i'm really thinking about over here is the dragon mark of healing that's what i was thinking of too the halfling to think to take it yeah to take yeah. it as a serious you know feat it's a free-to-play thing that everybody can take and they'll have access to actual healing that you know it's still not going to be as good as asmar i mean you still have to take two feats you can have to take the dragon mark feat and the endless dragon mark feat just so you can use it yeah and and it's still going to give you six charges, but it'll be pretty good. It'll be it'll be a solid thing versus having some kind of ability that you know you run dry and that's it. You're done. I mean, well, yeah. As at high levels, you can always recharge it, so you'll run away and wait. I mean, it's not optimal, but it's an option. So yeah, and it, it would give more reasons to play halfling also, and I think that that race could definitely use that. Uh, like, there's not a lot of compelling classes for halfling. I mean, you can play halfling and it's fine. It's just like other than what like rogue and maybe what like monk i'm not or like a thrower build i'm not thinking of really offhand any classes are like oh man i've got to go halfling you know so it would actually give you a reason to maybe do like a a halfling um i don't know a halfling fighter or something 
because you could heal with the dragon marks. Yeah, I think it would help a lot of the newer uh, new players who are, want want to play some kind of class and want to have self healing, but don't want to have to play healing class. And halfling could be a go to. You could play halfling with whatever. And would have the option to heal, and then you can play whatever class you want. I don't have to make a difference if it's a caster or a melee. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like. I have to play healer if I want to be able yeah. to heal myself. And maybe they could tweak. You could tweak the 180 seconds. Like I don't know if that's what three minutes. I don't know if that's you know too fast or too slow or whatever. But you know they could tweak it that. Testing, it's I don't know. yeah. They they could test that. Like there, there's a lot of you know. I'm not going to pretend to know exactly. You know if these things would be perfectly balanced or not. It would be a thing that. You know they could throw it on Lamania and let people play around with it, and maybe let let it play out for a few months. And if it's too, you know, overpower, they could they could nerf it, or whatever. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll I think one eighty sounds pretty good to me. I mean, that doesn't sound. Seven charges. Yeah, how many charges do you get? Is it? You get seven at level sixteen, and it recharges like every one hundred eighty seconds. That's why. Yeah. I'm, I'm just. It's already been tested on that. I mean, mm -hmm. you can play Asimo basically with anything, so. Here's something who's worse, but it's free to play, but it's actually an option versus not having it at all. Right. Yeah. I don't really see the downside to this. I don't, I don't think there's anything in the game would break it. And I would love to see it. It would be a great feat. I definitely would take it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where they, you know, they don't, they got to balance self healing so that it's not, there's no place for a healer. But, you know, I, I think if there's a limited number of uses, then it should be okay. <clears throat> Okay, um the next one, Mighty Fortification. Um you for this you have a, another feat here you said this feat allows player characters to use strength for fortitude saves instead of constitution. So that, you know, that would be interesting. I mean, there are pl you know, plenty of other feats in the game that lets you do something similar like insightful reflexes or whatever, but uh I guess when I saw this initially, I was like, well, some I could see some characters benefiting from this, like barbarians or something, but I, I don't know. I mean, everyone takes constitution anyways, so I don't know how attractive it would be. Uh, I don't think it's a outstanding feat. I don't think yeah. it's a great... Like, it's, I don't think it breaks the game in any kind of way. I just think it's actual... It's kind of like a flavor and filler feat who I think just belongs in the game. I mean, yeah, theme-wise, it, it kind of makes sense, and it would actually help out, you know, those some characters who... Will go full DPS and stack up all of their strength, to, you know, so they can take one feat and get a better fortitude save out of it. So they just basically never fail. I don't know. I mean, it just it was just an option. I think that it, it there's no reason why it shouldn't be in the game. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't have in my mind any kind of build that I think is like dying to have this. But. I was thinking like a barbarian might take it something like a really high strength barbarian, but you know, I don't know. Um, it would it would be something I could see some players taking, but. Maybe probably wouldn't be like super popular, but that's fine. I mean, you don't want it to be like overpowered or anything. I think it's it yeah, seems well, seems fine to me. Out over here, that would help you out with not having to, you know, have your when anytime you take well, actually, anytime you have a negative con for for whatever reason, he pointed out like blood tribute, you wouldn't have your fortitude save go down. Also, true. So this would allow you to, you know, manipulate your your base your, your position, so you don't have to also suffer. From yeah. the fortitude save. Yeah, like the only thing I was thinking with this is like, yeah, like unlike uh, you know other feats like this, like no one can dump constitution. Like you're gonna take a decent. Every character sh should be taking a decent amount of constitution anyways. So you know the 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 gain you get out of this feat may not be what you would get out of like insightful reflexes or something. But still, I mean, still like a barbarian, I think would really like this. But, uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next feat you have a four different, um, basically feats that let you bypass different types of piercing, um, bludgeon or slashing, dr. Um, so you want to talk about that? Like, what was your thought on that? Yeah, well, there's already kind of things like this who exist in the game. Different versions of this, either as feats or special item effects, and rather than always having to like bend your build so it has to use that one item, I don't know why. Uh, just have it so you can take a feat and you can make it, you know, way more versatile. And I'm looking for blunted ammunition. I don't have to have that one quiver. Uh, you get level 28, uh, 29, or quiver of petrifying, I think it's called. Epic quiver of petrifying. Uh, well, you just have an option. You can take a feat and just, you know, done deal. There's like bowl of silver flame and 
silver slinger, I think it's called. The you get crossbow and bow, but these are all like limited options rather than have yeah. all these different like having to fit your build into a specific thing. Just have you know feats who cover these different aspects. Uh, that was uh, my phone. Sorry. Um, um, but yeah, anyways, like I was, I, I don't, I mean, I'm not sure how popular they would be just because it seems like kind of expensive just to take one feet for just to bypass, like piercing, get pe piercing DR bypass or whatever. I mean, I, I don't know. Do, do people really care that much about bludgeon slash piercing type bypass? Um, I mean, I, I don't see people like, for example, swapping over to malls a lot to like, to beat on skeletons, for example. So I, I, I don't know. I mean... I could see some players taking it maybe, but I, it probably wouldn't be all that popular. I'm saying just because it's you know it's hard to spare a feat for it. Like I, well, I, I personally don't one. ever take. Depends I never take one. Yeah, like I yeah. never take the the silver bypass feats or whatever. I mean, I, I always just I, like I always look for that stuff on augments or enhancements or whatever. I, I don't really take feats for bypass. Well, here's the thing: some things are in, in the game are like immune to piercing for instance like the pillars in Vaughn mm -hmm. there's like sometimes you just want to have I mean if you're playing slashing versus bludgeoning usually they both work one of them's got a damage reduction so big deal but if you don't have piercing I'm sorry if you're stuck with piercing because you're playing a bow character or any kind of thing it's just piercing so all of a sudden you got things for pure immune to piercing so having a way to bypass that without having to swap your weapon I mean Again, these are things that are kind of niche. I don't think that everybody in the game will start taking these things, but they can enable many new builds that would rather, you know, having to stick to a specific weapon and make the whole build, because there's only one weapon that works, have the option that they can build it however they want to play it and just have these feats to cover them if they really need it. Because right now, there's certain things you just can't do when you're stuck with farming out one specific item. So here you've got a feat. Yes, it's expensive. That's the point. But also, you'll get to build the build the way you want to do it. You're not just locked into, no, you've got to have this item where you can't make your build. Yeah. And then still, it still costs a feat, so you're, you're paying some kind of price for it. So, yeah, I, I, it sounds fine to me. I mean, I, I, maybe I'm not thinking of certain balance scenarios right now, but yeah, it's, it seems fine. Um, let's see. The next one is Crippling Attacks. So epic feat, all of your melee and range attacks now apply crippling on hit. Uh, so that's like a slow effect. Yeah, basically. There's items already who do this. Right, range, yeah, there are, there are. At level 18 and level 21, and then for melee, I think there's like an armor you get from uh, VOD maybe, um, heroic VOD. Uh, so having a feat, again, it costs you a feat, but a flavor thing if you decided you really wanted to go for a bow build who has crippling on it so you're not stuck with that level 21 trinket all the way at level 30 so yeah i think more options is good i mean i don't see anything wrong with this like like you said i mean i know there are a lot of there are items in game that already grant this so um, seems fine to me okay what's next a lot of these feats are just basically trying to avoid the situation where you're stuck to a specific item to enable the build and allow you to Create a build who would look and feel the way you want, but have that ability. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, next one, you have a bunch of call to action feats, basically that would give you extra action points. I assume that means for, you know, for your your enhancement trees. Yeah. Okay. So you've got class action, improved class action, and greater class action. So each would give plus three to class enhancement tree and i thought one was universal maybe i'm thinking of a later one yeah that the, you... the, the, fir the first one's universal you can take that as many times as you want but it only gives you plus two action points so you sacrifice a feat for two action points not the greatest but sometimes it's great depending on if you just got too many feats that one you can always take the other ones are more are you get more for your for your feet you get three but there there's a limited amount of them you can only take one of each of these so five ten and fifteen and they're also limiting on the tree that you use them. So they're, you can't just take them as much. So Yeah, so it's class only. Yeah, I mean, the obvious thing with this is that, you know, balance reasons. If you could take, if you had extra action points, then you theoretically could take two capstones. And I know they don't want that. Um, so I think that's the main thing I'd, issue I'd bring up with these feats. Just balance. I mean, they don't want to allow two capstones. If you get 
let's see, it's 40, 40 points for the capstone plus one more to take it. Um, so if you get above that, like 80, what, how many action points do we have now? Like 80, 80, 81, I think, because we've got the unit, we already have the universal uh, tree tome, right? Like if you plus one uh, universal yeah. tree points. And we've got, of course, racial past lives that give you a lot of extra uh, racial points. So I, I don't know. I think there's a, a balance concern with this well, one. I, but... I'm not worried about that for the simple reason. The same thing they did with the tier fives. I mean, if you're going to enable players to go over 82 points, so then you would have to do the exact same thing you did right now with your tier fives. You can only take tier fives in one tree. So you can only take a capstone in one tree. And they, rather than limiting you by the amount of action points, um, they just need to make it so when you take one capstone, just locks the other one out. Yeah, and they could do that. I don't know if that exists already. It's, it's I mean, not any worse than what we've got today, but uh, yeah, sometimes you're stuck with extra feats you don't need. And, you know, think of it like this. You spend three, you get three extra action points, and I can take, I don't know, toughness out of one of the trees at the bottom. You know, you get another 15 hit points. You could have taken a, taken a feat and got 32 hit points. That would have been better. So the higher up the tree you go, it's probably worth even more. But again, you're not, it's, not, it's not like you're going to be taking more stuff in your tier 5 because if you've got a good tree, you're already taking everything in the tier 5. It's just more of the lower tier stuff that you're going to like have a few extra action points versus whatever you would get on a feat that you like, I don't really need that. I'd rather take something for flavor from the tree. Yeah, it might, yeah, it might be okay. I'm just kind of wondering if, if someone out there will figure out some kind of like, uh, like overpowered combination or something, but it... I guess if they if if they limit the the capstone thing like that's the main concern that, that I know they don't want to allow two capstones, um, but yeah it might be okay. Want to show the other variations of this? Oh yeah, I mean, this is just scroll down. I mean they're, they're all basically repeats, but they're, they're the same concept all of them. There's one for class, one for uh, racial, and one for universal. Yeah, I think the racial one in particular would be fine. I mean you can already get a lot of those through uh, past lives. So yeah. this might be a way for players who, you know, want to check out a new build, but it requires a whole bunch of racial past lives to play. So can they can give up a few of their feats who are less important and have this. Yeah, and like 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 I was saying earlier, I mean maybe this needs to be tweaked a little bit for balance. I mean maybe it needs to be two action points or the minimum levels need to be different. But yeah, I mean the racial one especially I don't see any issue with. Yeah, I think more testing must be done before. I mean, this is my my best guess based on you know. Yeah, and just, stuff. I, I but I don't have any better thing. Yeah, and just so people know, I mean, these are just like this is just like theorizing. So it's not like we're like, oh gosh, this is absolutely hundred percent perfectly balanced. It's like, no, <laughs> it's like you know, this is stuff we're proposing or Albar is proposing, and you know, it probably would need tweaking, um, in certain areas, but um. I, I do not envy the developers who have to go through and consider stuff like this and balance. I mean, there's so many build combinations in DDO and so many different ways to just build characters. It's just, it's hard not to, it's hard for them to tie up every loose end. Yeah. But, uh, okay. I think that's it for the f first one. I think we're going to go to, um, let's see. Yeah. Loot and items next. Okay. If that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, great. All right. So let me... Okay. So, Albert, do you want to explain this this kind of first slide here and what you came up with in terms of, like, shard seals and scrolls and all that? Yeah. Well, the old system with the shard seals and scrolls, it's still going on, and I don't see that they're going to change it anytime soon. So here's a system that would make it so it's more accessible for people who either don't have that much time to farm a specific item or they've been playing the game for a million years and they've got a whole bunch of useless scrolls, seals, and shards. Basically taking the whole system and making it, uh, well, a little bit more flexible so it will gain relevance also today. I mean, there's still items that people are still farming till this day. And I don't know, Ring of Spell Soaring, I don't know. I, epic, I gave up uh, like SLS. years ago on that one. Yeah, so the Ring of Spell Soaring, should, yeah. Should give you an option to, you know, go get those items. Because right now there's no hard cap on these items. I mean, you can farm for forever and not get them if you've got bad luck sometimes. I mean, uh, so having having the option to make sure that there's always a top hard cap limit on the amount of time you're going to have to farm for things who are, should be mainly obsolete, I think is a good idea. So Yeah, yeah and like 95% of the stuff 
is like obsolete anyways or is not that good i mean obviously there's exceptions like the sort of shadow and stuff but i mean yeah, yeah I, I mean i haven't got the shard of that yeah i, I never did eat. i gave up on that one years ago too i mean i have the base item and when i was doing trs that was enough for me to have the base item i did pull that one but i, I was never able to get the shard um on the, on the sort of shadow so but yeah i mean i i don't see a problem with making the old loot easier to get I think it's okay generally as as the years go by they make the older stuff easier to get like like they've done they've done some that they do that sometimes like I know slavers for example they redid the, the recipes for the slavers pack and made them easier to craft so yeah I think doing more like there's some really old items that are not worth crafting at all and a lot of those are are in the shard seal scroll system so I think that's fine I guess the only thing I would I guess object to here is the or, or at least the thing I, I don't think would ever happen was would be the bottom where you say any shard, seal, or scroll can be traded in for tokens of the 12. I don't think they would ever allow, I don't think SSG would ever allow that just because they want people to, uh, you know, they want people to, to buy hearts to TR. You know, they want there to be a time versus grind mechanic there for, for tokens. And there's so many shards and seals uh, and scrolls sitting around in the game. And that would basically give people infinite tokens. So... Okay. Well, you yeah. want to go over the rest of the chart and like do sure. the overall. Yeah, yeah. You you can go ahead and do that if you want. Fine. So basically, the we've got, I put like this. So any old raid item, you can buy it for fifteen greater tokens, and times a multiplier of one, two, or three based on how rare it is. So all your trash tier items, you can buy them for fifteen greater tokens, assuming they're raid items. Yeah, and if they're kind of in the middle, you can. So that'll be 30 tokens. And if they're like the really high end tier stuff, you could buy it for 45. So it's expensive, but if you've been playing DDO forever and you've got tons of greater tokens, but you just don't have any luck. So there you go. You can buy your item for 15. And yeah. Then... I don't know about raid letting letting you buy raid items either. I mean, I, I don't know. That's That's an iffy one just because, you know, then you lose a reason to run the raid. And well, you have to go run the raid in the first place to get the raid tokens. It's not like you can get raid tokens from any place else. So you have to run raids. But rather than yeah, but you don't have to run that raid. specific raid, like for the Sword of Shadow, for example. You, know, you wouldn't have to run Vault of Night anymore. Fine, but if you you still have to run forty-five times Demon Queen to get it. I don't know. I mean, it's still yeah. it's still a very high. I mean, I again, I think you should still give the player the option. I mean, not punish him for. Uh, so he really can't stand that raid, so he's never going to get the item because of it. I mean, still, he has to put it in a significant amount of effort. Yeah. It's not like it's for free. You're still going to have to run and grind and drive yourself crazy to get it. So... Yeah, maybe it should work. Maybe instead of this, we could do something similar to the, uh, or at least just expand the raid rune system to the older raids. Maybe something like that. Uh, could be an option as well. They should really, I wish they would going, expand that. going to do that. Yeah. This I... is a short, just yeah at a guy who trades tokens for stuff so yeah i wish they would do that for all raids though uh, hopefully someday yeah i don't even know do the old raids still have the 20th list mechanic in place the ones that didn't go back and well, add some raid of them do some of them don't I yeah mean, i i farmed 20 20 uh what's it called uh demon queens raid, uh, not no not mark of death the other one the black abbot because i wanted to get my keeper. oh I mean, it's not because of tokens, but I did it 20 times with, you know, because I wanted that quiver, but it's only a 50% chance on your 20th time. Yeah. And I didn't get it. So this the stuff like this drives, it drives me crazy. So yeah. Like a hard cap on these things is like really important. Yeah. Like years ago when I was grinding out a, uh, a torque from Demon Queen, I think I had to run that raid. I think it was on my third, like third or fourth 20th list before it actually appeared. Uh, so yeah, I, I feel you there. That's pretty punishing. So if they could do something to kind of flatten that out where you can get your item in a reasonable amount of time, that, that, that would be pretty cool. It doesn't even have to be like kind of reasonable. It just has to be like fixed. If I knew that after 45 times I'm going to get it, I can live with that. But not even knowing that I'm going to get it after 45 times, that's just like too much. Yeah, like I, I think RNG in DDO is, is fun to an extent. But yeah, it can definitely go too far. Like people who have been running Vault of Night for you know, for years and years trying to get the sort of shadow in the shard is that's, that's kind of ridiculous or, or the, uh, what the 
ring of spell storing in the desert that's that stuff's kind of ridiculous like you should it should not be years but uh, some rng is probably okay but yeah it's definitely something to flatten out a little bit also this would option give people, players options i don't know when when inquisitive came out suddenly some players want to go farm out storm from demon queen because also i'm like they wanted to give it a try now that also uh, now that inquisitive made heavy crossbows a thing so now people want to try it out so before they would just trash it now they wanted to go get it so making it suddenly so go and buy it for 45 you know or probably that would be more like 30 because it's really not that you know exciting but having an option i think mm -hmm. I think I can go through the rest of this list and we can move on. So okay. the, yeah, go ahead. I said 15 for greater tokens if it's a raid item. If it's non-raid item, I don't know, if you don't, going for the stuff from the Party Crashers, um, the House Fjarlin chain. So those items would be 15 to 45, but just regular tokens of the 12. So those, those are not raid items. Uh, that would also mean that Ring of Spell Storing was actually not a raid item. I mean, this comes from a rare chest and sand so if you got the patience you can just run out and go collect it yourself it's not even bound to character you can sell it on the auction house so yeah it'll be 45 but regular tokens and if you got the patience you can run out um yeah go get it uh, the other ones would be the shards that you get for the items so those would be again greater tokens of the 12. um non-raid item shards again like the ones from party crashers so those would be just regular tokens and then seals are 10 tokens and scrolls are five tokens. Again, these are all times they're multipliers depending on how rare they are. So if it's an item was very, very rare, the multiplier goes up. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and you know, maybe, you know, it's, with balance, they would need to tweak the values. But I think generally as a concept, it's, it sounds fine to me. So, OK, well, we'll we can go ahead and move on. Yeah, OK. OK, so. The next kind of slide here, you have uh, you have lesser core orbs, core orb. You want to explain this because I wasn't totally sure. Or, or is this an item, or is it yeah, a this is an orb? An item. Okay. These are one, two, three, four, five different items that are for spaced out for the different levels. And the objective of this item is to enable some kind of power on um, wands. Right now, wands are basically junk. You can do them either for summoning things or buffing, but actually offensive ones, they, since they don't really scale really good, you can't really use them as a viable option. So even if you went and collected all the wands and wanted to make a wand build, you're not going to be doing any serious DPS because you just you don't have anything to back it up. You'd have to make a very specific character who's got some kind of way to manipulate wands and even then, it's not going to be that great. It, need, it still needs help. So would this go, so, would, would this go in your like, would it act like an you orb and go in hand. your hand, or would it be a trinket? Yeah, you hold it in your hand. In your hand, this okay. This is your offhand item. Okay. You have a wand, a eternal wand, probably, but you'd have a wand in your right hand, and then a this offhand orb you'd put in your left hand. So I'm just showing how the functionality would work. You'd drag, drag it onto your shortcut bar, and then you would click on it like you would click on a metamagic feat. Uh, sorry, metamagic, uh, like, a, like you would click on a spell, and then you can activate well, depending on which, this is like a level three. You can see it has only three metamagics on it. This is the, the greater core orb, level 15, and you could select three metamagics to have active on your, on, on your uh, what's it called? Your wand. Uh, on your wand. Because the wand, Assuming, wand would be in the uh, other hand. You already have these metamagics, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, in, I mean, in, in concept, it seems okay. I, I, wands definitely are really weak <laughs> offensively i mean they have their uses for healing and you know blur wands and stuff but yeah they're definitely very weak when it comes to offensive casting and yeah i i agree that they should be it would be reasonable to buff them in to in some extent just gotta i don't know how the the balance might be hard like i, I wouldn't want people to be able to have like infinite spell points through this you know because you could just stock up with wands you wouldn't want people to be able to like fighters be able to just fireball mobs and stuff. So the balance might be a little tricky. And I also don't know if they could do this uh, tech from a technical standpoint, like applying metamagics to an item like this. I mean, maybe, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. So both things, first of all, from the technical standpoint, this is one who's probably not going to happen because I mean, if you remember old time monks, 
They always had problems. Every time they would add some kind of effect to a weapon, monks would have a problem because it wouldn't apply properly to hand wraps because they were just coded different. Oh, than all by the way, weapons. Sakara, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So eventually they, they just had to fix it. They changed monks' hand wraps to just be weapons, and that solved all the problems. Right now, the reason that wands are, well, that not effective is because they're coded different. They really should be just casting a spell that instead of using spell points, it uses charges on this wand. And once they do that, everything else should fall into line. But right now, yeah, there's a good chance that they'll give you reasons why they can't do it. But really, that's the thing behind it. Everything, all the coding needs to be changed to make wands work like regular spells. And that would fix a whole bunch of things. For the other point you mentioned about them being overpowered, all of this together, even with your plus five wand DC, still is not going to make it that it's really a viable option unless you mm -hmm. also build a character that can support it. If you do both, you build a character who has the abilities to, you know, to buff up his abilities on wands plus this, so maybe you'll become semi-viable. Yeah, like but, uh, I, I think that like would. Somebody who's, yeah. yeah, I think that's a good a good spot for it. Like I wouldn't want it. I like, it's hard for me to, I guess, imagine where, how like just from what's on the screen here, like how viable it would be without testing it and stuff. But I don't think it, it sh definitely shouldn't be like. A situation where it's as viable as like a sorcerer's you know regular spells like a like when they're they shouldn't be able to use fireball from a wand and it'd be as effective i don't think as you a have to remember you know, as a spell like a fighter could do this yeah because they can't really use this i mean he can hold it in his hand to get well, the plus five dcs he wouldn't have the meta without magic. the meta magics who he's not going to be taking because he can be taking all of his melee feats yeah so it's just you have to have all the things together so it's going to be somebody who already has meta magics and he's got something to add to his wand dcs Who's gonna add this now? Make it kind of viable. Yeah, if it was like a tier, like a tier below, like their their mana casting stuff, then it might be okay. It, I think it would be have a role there as kind of a backup. Uh, you know, if you're out of SP, you can pull out a wand and do something with it. Maybe equip this in your offhand. Yeah, it seems pretty cool in concept. I mean, definitely they should boost up wands at least some. So okay. Okay, we did. You have anything else on this? And go to the next one. No. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Do you want to explain this? The the next slide here, converting eternal wands into protection augments. Yeah. So this is just a fun gimmick. Again, thinking about things to do with wands. So saying maybe you can just take your wands, and, well, eternal wands, and now that they made this system, something actually I've been thinking about for a long time, making augments out of items, but they finally implemented it. So now that they started with that, so here's another idea. You can combined using the same system that they have already now you can take any eternal wand and turn it into an augment and you slot this augment in and it goes off when you get attacked so whatever whatever hits you can trigger it so instead of it being a offensive item it becomes a now a defensive item again with the scaling the way it is right now nothing is really too powerful i mean only one that i think is really funny is your roderick's wand having that trigger every time you get hit. I mean, it's going to run out really fast. You're going to summon six monsters, one after each other, and then it'll empty out. But as soon as the next charge comes in, you'll be able to summon another monster. I mean, assuming you get hit. I think it's it's just a fun gimmick, and you can make some really fun character builds out of it. Yeah. Specifically, I was talking about Epic Ro Roderick's Wand. I mean, I already have like an ooze item that drops oozes when I get attacked, so having some other stuff drop out of you every time you get hit like, yeah like, fun. I that is fun i don't think it's overpowered it's more like a flavor item uh, yeah like i still have on one of my uh one of my items just because i had an extra augment slot i have the uh Cerulean, i think Cerulean crest of wave i think it is is that no maybe i'm thinking of something else but it's like a it's like a wave proc it's like a water proc it's just kind of fun to have on there it's not any good it's not it's not vi like it's not viable but i had an extra slot and i was like why not so they are fun. I mean, there's probably some really, there would be probably be some really good combinations like the cure, some of the cure procs. Like, think, aren't there what, endless, um, aren't there eternal wands of like mo cure moderate out there? I, I was thinking. Mm, et eternal, I'm not aware of. There is one. I thought there was a, from eternal. an event or something. There was one out there. Maybe uh, it could be, I don't know. Yeah, the, the I, I could be wrong. The only wand you can get is, gives you one hit point. Comes from catacombs. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can try to scale that up as to <laughs> As high as it can go, but it gives you back one hit point. Yeah, and I think I think uh, you know, and and you know, if there is a balance problem, they could just put a cooldown on it or whatever. 
Uh, so uh, they can also ban one wand to make it not work. It doesn't. They don't have yeah, to add all it, of the eternal wands. I mean, if anything, it doesn't seem like it. But it would it would enable like little fun things you could do with these wands versus just you know throwing them out. Yeah. Cur okay. Um, Kaiduro says cure minor is the only eternal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. cure minor is not how many. That's that's really low. That's that's it's from Corthos, isn't that from Corthos? That's the one from Corthos. No, I, I think it comes from Catacombs. Or Catacombs, okay. Yeah, I think the end reward list maybe. Oh, okay. Okay, so the heals probably wouldn't be an issue. Nope. Okay, so next we have raid loot reroll using runes. So any raid that gives raid runes will have the option to reroll using the runes you got in that chest. This can only be done one time per chest. Since the reroll uses up the runes and you don't get any more after the reroll, so you want to kind of explain your thoughts on that. Well, here, here's the thing if I ran a raid 20 times, I could use the runes to buy an item, okay? Right now, but every time I open up a chest, I have a chance of getting a piece of loot. I can rather than stack up on all my runes, I can just use them right now to kind of reroll. That means rather than saving them all up, I'm trying to use them again right now for a better chance of getting extra loot. It balances out, it should be exactly the same, just do you wanna go for the luck versus do you wanna go for collecting the runes? So yeah, whatever, like, whatever is better for you. I mean, if you go, if you reroll right now, you might never get your item because if you just got bad luck, after 20 times you've done this raid or 10 times with the reroll, you still won't have your item versus if you just save up all your runes, you would. So it's a, depending on what you feel like, if you're all in for that luck or you just wanna, you know, I guess it depends on how desperate you are to get it right away. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I didn't think about it that way, to where you could, you know, with the, the you could go long term guaranteed or short term, you know, risking. But uh, I don't think this would ever happen just because SSG wants to monetize it with shards, the rerolls. But I think do they have shards in in in, in rune? Uh, I mean, in raids, you can reroll raid. Loot. Um. Uh, I don't actually. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. This is specifically raids. I don't think you can with raids. I think isn't it just quest? I, I, I don't know. I've never. I'm not sure. I've I never. Re enough. I don't know. I, I will tell you. I've never once rerolled a chest that I can remember. I don't think I ever have. So I, I'm. I'm not sure if it's. They don't allow it in raids. Um, it might be quest I'm only. Sure they don't. But again, okay. If somebody fixes me, I really don't know. I couldn't find it on the wiki. So. Okay. That's where we're at. Yeah. But if it was, I think you mentioned specifically just raids. But if it if it was regular quests, well, it wouldn't work in raids. No, it's it's just raids only because we're talking runes. Yeah, but only raids. yeah, I, I don't think if it was anything touching chest rerolls and regular quests, I don't think they would, you know, ever do anything that would take away from people spending money on that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, if yeah, I don't think they should. I mean, yeah, they should be. They got to make money. An option to, you know, make money. Whatever. Yeah. So. I'm saying this doesn't change the existing balance at all. It really just makes it so if you feel more like luck versus the long time goal, you have that option. Yeah, whatever the balance is, you know, it should be it should be there. I mean, you're not saying that this is actually you didn't even throw out any specific numbers, I don't think, as in terms of how many um how many runes it would cost, but uh whatever it is, it should well, the, be the co the cost would be depending on that chest. So I mean, if yeah. it's hard, you would have more runes and there'd be a better chance of getting loot, but you're spending mm -hmm. all of them. So yeah. it keeps the balance exact, exactly what it would be. So elite, you would have a higher chest because it's an elite chest. I wonder if- spend more rooms. I wonder if, someone, if, if you gave a specific number, like in the number changed per raid, I wonder if you could like go, well, no. I was thinking if, that you could do the math backwards and figure out the drop rates, but um, probably not because you'd be going, yeah, probably not. Just a thought I had. So Sakara in chat says, since I started DDO, my favorite two characters are my melee Maul Cleric and my great crossbow machine bow. Thanks to thanks to you both. So it looks like he runs um, a character from a build I put out there and or at least yeah. a similar build, and build you put out there. Thank you, Sakara. And I saw your uh, comment the other day where you said that me and Aldbar were your two favorite YouTubers or DDO YouTubers. We, we really appreciate uh -huh. that. Yeah, so I thank agree. you. Thank you. So thank you for the super chat. Okay, I think that's it for the um, the loot items and stuff. So I guess we can go on now to the vampire tree, spirit of the vampire tree. Yep. yep. And this one might be a little bit harder for people to see, just because, as you all can see on the screen, I'm going to scroll through the different slides. It's kind of hard to see what exact enhancement 
Uh, what what exactly? If you, yeah. if you play it, when you yeah, you can click on them and they. Oh, can you? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know I could do that. I, oh, awesome! I really hard to make sure it works. So wow, I didn't even know I could do that. See. That's awesome. Okay, well, never mind. So then we'll just I guess we'll just start at the bottom. Yeah, just go through it by order. Yeah. So it's easy to follow along. So okay. Like a line. And we'll do you want to start? A line and... Do you want to start with start the the cores, the cores okay. and then go? How about we do the cores and then go through line by line? Yeah, okay. I'll explain basically what this tree is trying to achieve before we get into it. Okay. So uh, I think I was watching a video maybe by Stream Tom about uh, he was playing a two-handed, a two, a two-handed, yeah, fighter, pure can I say, and he pointed on something that really I agree with that it comes to when it comes when you're trying to play pure melee DPS, you're gonna have to do it with a party, and you're always dependent on the party, and it's hard to make it that you're self-sufficient. And if you want to play, if you want to play range DPS or caster DPS, no problem with that. You can even do reapers. Just stay back. The, your strategy is don't get hit. And if you're you, if you want to play tank or you want to play healer, those also viable options for soloing and all all the all the different play styles are are covered except for one. If you're trying to play pure melee DPS and you're trying to, you always have to hit things. You have to be right there. You're always going to be taking damage. So you either have to go the tank route, or you're gonna have to go the healer route. But you can't go pure DPS. Well, you have to get. You have to get. You can't. Yeah, you can heal yourself with certain builds. It's just you have to make. You do have to make a lot more sacrifices on a melee than you do on like yeah, a no, caster. Not, yeah. Again, it's, it's not pure DPS. If you want to go yeah. all in on DPS, you can't. There's no. There's no real strategy to not taking damage or healing damage because you're standing right there and you're taking damage all the time. So I was trying to think of some kind of build, some kind of tree who could address all those players who want to do melee and want to focus on melee. Whatever whatever kind of melee they're doing, they want to focus on the melee aspect of it. They want to stand right in the front line, hit things, but also not always feel like they're going to die every second. And if the you know their healer is floating for one second, that's it, quest over. So th that's what I started to work on this tree. So that's what this tree is mostly focused on, but also has like other cool stuff for other people if they want. So. That's basically what this tree is, and we'll get into it as we go. Okay, down. I was thinking when I looked at it initially that it was more of a. Uh, it looked kind of like a tanky kind of tree to me. Um, I, you have a few offensive enhancements in here, which we'll get to in a minute. But you have a lot of uh, like temporary hit points and stuff. But you did yeah. you did have so some active attacks. But we'll, we'll get into those in a minute. Yeah, well, I'll, we'll see when you get into it. I'll explain how it's supposed to be played, and it'll make more sense as as we go through it. So you called it Spirit of the Vampire. Is there any reason? You want that thing? Yeah, well, basically, you get your, your a lot of your abilities are based on things you hit. That means you have to attack actively, hit things, and that helps you. It gives you back abilities, either hit points, temporary hit points, healing, or other things. So it's you're taking it off your character that you're attacking. If you don't have anything to attack, you gain nothing. So it's coming from some other place. It's not coming from you. These are not self healing abilities. You have mm -hmm. to suck it, you have to suck, suck the life or power out of something else. So I thought Spirit of the Vampire, and that was the theme for this. So there we go. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, we'll start with the cores here, with the first core. Uh, so recovery. And a lot of you, these cores have to deal with, um, they deal with healing and amplification, basically. So first core, yeah. you have, you know, 10 positive, negative repair amplification. You are immune to fear. Uh, I saw this initially. It seems like way too good for one point to me. Like, I think everyone would take this. So I think you might need to, like, Tone this down a little bit, which is you know, which is fine. Um, like like I said earlier, you know, we're talking about this tree as a general concept, so there's probably going to be things as we go through that wouldn't be perfectly balanced, just because it would have to be tested and stuff. So it's just like general, just yeah. general. Isn't there like ideas here? Who make you? Isn't there like items who you can take who give you immunity to fear? Or am I just? Um, let's see. Yeah, um, I believe so. I mean, there's definitely I think there's enhancements. I think that already exists. You can get like yeah, yeah. Items have fear immunity on them. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think. And yeah. Also, again, this is one of those things I was thinking. If exactly that, if you add this to the game and you can buy it as a universal enhancement tree, yeah, people will go out and buy it just so they can take that first point. Exactly that. And yeah, I don't you know, think it breaks the game, but it was like instead of taking this item and slotting it in some place, yeah, like, ooh, just spend one action point. And yeah, Sakara brings up a good point. There's actually fear immunity. You can get those with I think tokens of the twelve, 
believe. Yeah, you can buy a dog. Yeah, because I have one I, of those. I, I, I remember character. when I was thinking of it, it didn't seem to me that broken. But well, fear. I don't think the long. fear is. I think the fear is probably probably okay. Well, although I would probably put it up a little bit higher in the tree. But I think the ten plus ten repair it or or positive heal amp negative heal amps probably that's i think that's too much for one point i think i just think every single character would take it um well so, the, the way i the way i priced it was because humans get a plus 20 for two points so i just went plus yeah. 10 for one point now that's how that's how i got that price okay um, um it, yeah again it could be she start. it could be the whole thing should be dropped down to like plus five instead of plus 10 these are balancing things you have to check out. I, yeah, I, definitely. And like, like we're I'm not, not claiming. Old answer. Yeah, I'm we're not, not gonna... claiming like this is stuff is perfectly balanced. Like this is the way it has to be. So <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 cool in concept. Okay, so Robert says this looks cool, but the name invokes an undead feel. What about Life Drinker instead? That could be. Um, yeah, I wasn't. Uh, this is not like locked in that it had to be. The, you'll see the other abilities in the tree. Were based around this this idea. I mean, there. I if you'll if you read it, I ma I named everything. So every one of these abilities has a name to it also, and they all want the same theme. So maybe you'll be sold if you see more of the things. If not, yeah, yeah. it could be. It'll have to be changed. Okay, we'll move we'll move on to the second core here, uh, which is pretty typical adaptability. So plus one to a stat. I mean, not really a lot to say there. I mean, there's a lot of trees yeah. that have similar enhancements, so it's pretty standard. And then the next core, uh, improved recovery, so more um, healing amplification, positive, negative, repair. So not, not a lot to say there. And then the next core is just another plus one adaptability, which is you know pretty standard for cores. And well, the then, third core had immunity to curse. And did it? Oh, no oh, I, I just, yes. I meant to talk about that. I, I missed that. Um, yeah, I don't know how that would play, just because, as far as I know, there's only one item that lets you have curse immunity that's in the game right now, and that's the Heart of Silomalis trinket from uh, the uh, the the marketplace raid. Shoot, I'm drawing a blank. Um, I just vision and destruction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if putting an enhancement tree would work. Uh, maybe putting it a little bit higher, possibly. But well, for years they were trying to avoid it, and they yeah. made sure that you, would, you could only have like a resistance to curse. And then like they seemed to break that by going, "I guess we'll give you an item with immunity to curse." So like I think they like kind of did a one eighty on that, and they changed their mind. Yeah, Not sure. I, I don't you... know how that. Like I, I was surprised to see them do that. They put a curse immunity item into the game. I guess it is a, a raid item that's hard to get, so it's kind of balanced that way. But. It could be just a resistance to curse plus four resistance to curse plus Maybe. eight resistance to curse. I, I don't know. Yeah. This was I was I, I tried to make things that already existed, so I knew yeah that I no I already, I think now we, we I think the ship has sailed that line already. Yeah, and I think the ship has sailed now that it's in the game already, so it's it's probably fine yeah, to let, offer it an enhancement let, tree let, at this point. Let's see them let's see them remove it now. <laughs> oh man, there would be a lot of uh, people upset about that one, and I know that there's people who farm that out. Uh, it is also, I believe, the Heart of Sumanis is also a, it's a trinket, and I think it's also a minor artifact, I believe. So there's some more restrictions on it that way. So the enhancement tree would be a better version, if if you know if you wanted to actually take what is it, ten points, eleven points, in the tree for it. Yeah. But but whatever, yeah. I mean, if it has to go up higher in the tree, whatever. I think it's fine to offer it. Okay, next, greater recovery. So um, more uh, positive, negative, and repair amplification, and then you are immune to petrification. Now, petrification, I think there's an enhancement in, is it Divine Crusader? I think, yeah, in Divine Crusader, they've got one, and also yeah. there's items that give it to you. There's so, a shield, there's now there's a ring. There's, there's, all, there's trying to add it more times. You can get now an augment who does it. Mm -hmm. You can craft a level 30 augment. So it, it's it's something who exists in the game, but... So this would give it to you again. You'd have to be level eighteen to get it. This is not cheap at all, but no, it's yeah. not. So I think that would be fine. Level eighteen, I don't see any problem with that. And then the capstone is more uh, amplification, so positive, negative repair, and then immunity, energy drain. Yeah. So you know, that's that's really nice if you're on a non war forged. Uh, again, you can get that either by being Warforged, or you can also get it from the Epic Destiny of Rogue, or whatever it's called, Shadow Dancer. There's an ability mm -hmm. over there that gives you immunity to energy drain. 
And again, realistically, this is 41 points spent in this tree. Yeah. So I doubt many people do, but if they do, it'll be worthwhile, maybe. I don't know. If you want to go that route. Yeah, and you've got a theme here throughout the cores of getting different immunities. So if you just want a really good... This is one of the other reasons I looked at this tree, and it, it, I kind of... Tanking really came to my head on this. But yeah, if you just want your character to be really good defensively and you just don't want to deal with energy drain and curses and petrification. And, exactly. It would allow, yeah. it would allow your melee character to focus on his DPS and not have to be worried about this this nonsense. Keep on, you know, putting setbacks on him and mm -hmm. driving him crazy and trying. Okay. All right. Well, we'll move on now, I guess, to the first the first row here. Uh, do you want to explain kind of what you're going for with this the left the row on the left hand side? Yeah. So here's this thing. This uh, this is a stance. You and this is the on. guys. And this is the first, the f right here, the first uh, enhancement in the bottom left hand corner. So. Yeah. So this is a stance. You would activate it, and as long as it's active, all of your main hand attacks. That means your right hand attacks. Uh, will give you temporary hit points. Now the way that you calculate how much temporary hit points. It takes your base attack bonus, so characters with higher base attack bonus will get more. And then it multiplies it by what I'm calling vampire die. And as we'll level up, you get more of these vampire die. So at level one would be times one. So your base attack bonus happens to be 13 right now. Times one, you'd get 13 temporary hit points for every time you would hit. And this is a, it will last until you rest and it would go off. Now, there's a inherent problem with this is that Obviously, it feels like it's unbalanced and it can run away and you could stack up crazy amounts of hit points. So first of all, there is a cap. The cap right now for this level, tier one, is equal to your base hit point. So if your base hit point is at level 400, so the max you could get up to would be another 400. That would be 800 total hit points. I mean, your base 400 plus the 400 temporary. Um, the problem is this... There's, when you think about it, it's, you, all you're thinking about is standing next to the training dummy and hitting it and, oh, easy hit points. You have to think about it as standing in the middle of, you know, being attacked and hitting monsters and being hit back um, and see how balanced it is. So there's three ways you can go with this. Either that it is balanced the way it is right now, and we'll see as it scales up, it gets really out of hand. And you assume that people won't want to spend that much points in this tree because they want to keep all of their defensive stats. That means he wants to go full kinesy. He's not going to spend that many points in this tree. I mean, think about uh, Falconary. I mean, not many people spend those 12 points or 11 points, whatever it is, to get the plus 5% of the hit points. They just can't afford it. Even though it's like so easy and everybody can take it, people just don't because they don't have the, hit, they don't have the action points for it. So I don't know how many action points people would spend. So this might be balanced as it is. But if not, there's two other options. One is limiting who can use this. That means anybody else who's got like an active stance, that means like warlocks and bear druid and wolf druid and a whole bunch of other things, they can't use it because you can only have one stance active and this will not work because it's a stance. But I don't like that option so much because it like limits the amount of things you can do. And the other one is the one that I'm probably going to, I would recommend is nerfing how long it stays. That means you only gain hit points as long as you're attacking. And as soon as you stop attacking, there's a, it starts. you start losing hit points at the same exact rate that you're gaining them. Yeah, that sounds and more interesting go, to me, the, the latter. So it would go, yeah. yeah, it would go like this, that on Elite, every second you would have a tick, you would lose, a, you would lose a, one tick of whatever temporary hit points. On Hard, it would be every two seconds, and on Normal, every three seconds. So basically, as long as you're still attacking, you would stack up hit points, but as soon as you stop, if you get knocked over, something happens, I don't know, there's no trash mobs to hit, now it starts sticking down really fast. And ultimately, what you're thinking is, I'm standing next to a raid boss, and the tank is taking aggro, and I'm hitting really fast, and I'm stacking up tons of tons of hit, uh, temporary hit points, and suddenly my tank goes down, or he dies or something, now the boss turns around to me and swipes me. So rather than dying in one hit, so I can take three, four hits before the tank gets back up, and still survive. So that's basically, you'll see as these cores go up, the amount of hit points that can stack up gets really high. But really, this doesn't add really DPS. This is plus zero DPS. Having tons of ten temporary hit points doesn't actually add to your damage. So if you're going full DPS, this is just allowing you to continue, you know, focus on your DPS. You would like, 
go maybe to tier three, that'll be enough for you and and move on from there. So I guess you should cre read up the rest of the, yeah. go up the rest of the tree and we'll okay. see how it goes. So the second tier here, you get another vampire die and then stacking up to 200% of your basic HP. Yeah, max. That's yeah, max, high max, because that's the cap. Um, and then the third one here, another plus one die. And then percent. Yeah, it seems it, it does seem really overpowered just at first glance. And like like I said, it's hard for me to get an idea of how good this would be in practice, like without testing something like this out, because I don't have an idea of how fast it would stack up. But I'm assuming well, if you have that's that's a trick because you yeah. think about this as a oh this would be great for a tank, but how fast does the tank hit, and how much da how much times does he actually hit? So mm -hmm. if you're a tank who's got great intimidate, you're and you stand there and you hold shield block, you're not gaining anything. And yeah. shield bashing also doesn't gain anything. You have to actually hit with your main hand. So if you're not swiping something with your main hand and building up yeah. hit points really fast, you don't have any extra temporary hit points from this. Yeah. So you have to go in and actually attack really fast and hit consecutively to make this actually start stacking up. Yeah, and it so, should it should fall off at some you know a reasonable rate as well. Um, but just on just on first glance, it does seem to be quite a lot better than say like what Frenzy Berserker gets. In terms of temporary hit points, or even it even seems to be competitive, if not better than the capstone of um, Unyielding Sentinel, where you can get what the ten thousand HP for a limited time. Which, if we're talking five hundred percent of your base HP, if you have two thousand, you know, hit points, that's going to be what ten thousand hit points as well. If you're able to get it to yeah. the cap, so yeah. Well, I mean, I mean yeah. this can go up to crazy numbers again. Yeah, you have to. You're assuming two things. First of all, who's going to give up their caps? To, who's going to give up their tier five? Who's got a, who, who's going to, who's the guy who's doing, uh, you know, who wants to go all in DPS, who will be willing to give up their tier five for this? So realistically, I wouldn't see anybody go to tier four, you know, higher than tier four. And uh, when they, it, it, just for, just for gaining the, the hit points is not the, you know, it's not, it's not everything. Uh, you still have to, you know, ma manage, you know, to do some kind of DPS and, I don't know. It's I I don't think as it is, it's uh, necessarily broken. It could be. Again, yeah. I didn't get to write in that extra part of how the the hit points drop. Yeah, we, we'd have to see yeah. how that work out. It seems too good to me, um, just first glance. But yeah, we'd have to look at it and to test it and such. But I couldn't see. I mean, if you were on a tanking build, like I, I, I see this tree like being. I know you're kind of thinking it would be more of an offensive, but there's. I actually see this really attractive for people who'd want to build, you know, a tank, um, with all this, with particularly this left line here, uh, assuming that the there's a reasonable build up for the temporary HP. So. Yeah, we've got a good suggestion over here to drop it instead of like times 100 to your base hit points, would go 50, 100, and stack up like that yeah so i wouldn't go as high it was a good idea um again these are these are all things that i can't i wrote it like this and i was like this is as far yeah. as i can go with just speculating yeah right you actually have to like start testing it before you can get any numbers right I mean, and it I'll... could be you go up to 20 percent is enough 20, yeah 40 60, 100 like could be that's already broken i don't i don't really know yeah like, exactly I don't know it, how, it, how it really works yeah and i want to read ultimately i wanted to point out the way that i was planning you would play this you would be a melee character, and suddenly this happens all the time. You're a melee character, you start taking damage, and then you're like, "Oh no, I'm gonna die!" So you run away to try to heal up. That's counter what you're trying to do. You're trying to play a melee character who runs in and hits things, and you're being encouraged. No, you have to leave what you're trying to do. Yeah, it's like the opposite of engagement. So having this, when you drop your hit point and you're about to die, the first thing you want to do is run and find something to hit. Just the opposite. You want to stay engaged. It makes you to focus on hitting things because that's how you live. If you stop hitting, you're going to die. Running away, you're not going to get any hit points. You have to stay focused on hitting things. So it makes you stay in the melee zone and keep on running after things. That was like and, the main goal of this. Yeah, like, and it shouldn't stack up qu so quick that you could just overwhelm spike damage with it. Like there should still be a role for healers, you know, with, with healing melees. Like you shouldn't be able to just, you know, if you're taking spike damage, you shouldn't be able to just it would definitely be broken if you could just recover on top of anything, you know, with this. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I see what you're going for. And I want to emphasize to people that we're not, you know, you're not saying this is all perfectly balanced. This is just theorizing. It would all have to be tested and such. Yeah. I think 
Sakurai is saying in chat. Hell, I prefer up to 500%. People would say blah, 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 too overpowered. <laughs> Um, it, it's hard to it's hard to see how it's hard to detect how powerful it is. Yeah, I mean, it is. The certain you can always find a theoretical build where it seems overpowered, but those people are overpowered in the first place, anyways. I mean, I was looking. Yeah, but you got to keep it within reason. I mean, if there's something off, like, well, let me put it this way: the, the people who do this professionally from SSG, they still have to put out multiple Lamani previews because they can't do it, and it's their job to balance stuff. You know? Yeah. Well, you don't know. Yeah. I mean, they just put out, just today, they just put out a, a, another balance change to Adrenaline. Um, what was it, yeah. today or yesterday? So, based just on feedback. So, yeah, it's it's hard. It's it's very, very hard to, to balance TDO. I'm glad yeah, I, I don't have to do it. I got a question here about Monk. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, you... I, I, if you click on the first tier, uh, the first one, you'll see right away that I just avoided that completely. I I don't see a way that Monk would work. So, I just cut out monk and I, and I cut out the paladin uh, sacred defender i i don't see those two working it's just though those are just asking for trouble um i mean there might be some other ones that will have to come out but i monk is already this will not work with monk i mean i'll have to i'll have to nerf this so bad that just to make it work with monk that the whole thing would break monks don't need this this is for like pure melee dps it, who yeah. don't have some way to already heal and that's and it's not range, it's just melee, right? Yeah, just melee. Just melee, no range. Yeah, so you couldn't do this with many There's shot or whatever. For everybody else. This is just is trying to solve a, a specific problem. I like to play melee DPS, but I don't want to have to be dependent on other people. So try to try to give it to as many builds as possible without like nerfing it or making yeah. it overpower. Well, what's the takeaway for the, the, design, the design philosophy there? Because, you know, you don't want to remove the... the role of healer I mean, that's something that people want and, and melee is kind of the last ones that really can't that really need healers quite a bit uh, compared to the other classes i mean like what's the what's the downside of the tree well the downside of the tree is again if you want it to really work really high you basically you're gonna have to give up some of your dps to even yeah. to go up to tier four, 20 points to spend in this tree, 22 points really, to be able to take it, that's going to come out of someplace else. That means you can take right. 22 points out of your DPS. This is really a balancing act. Mm -hmm. It should be that you play, you add it up just enough where you're not desperately depending on your healer to make sure you don't die instantaneously because your healer makes a mistake or you feel like you don't want to trust him or you, I don't know, you like playing mm -hmm. solo. You're only playing with a group because you have to and not having to feel like that. So just changing up the balance a little bit. I'm not yeah. really trying to make it so the you don't need healers anymore, but I'm trying to make it so you don't have right. to. Like everybody else can somehow work the game so they can solo it. There's one there's one archetype who just can't, and this is like here's an option. Here's yeah, you can. Like I I wouldn't see like the way I see it is if you took tier five spirit of the vampire. I mean your DPS wouldn't be as good as someone who went tier five can't say or crazy berserker or whatever. So. That's that seems to make sense. I mean, there's not a whole lot of I, I guess just pure like there's a couple here on the side we'll get to, but there's not a lot just of of DPS boosts in here. Like I don't see any critical multiplier stuff. No, no, this is not a DPS damage. Tree. Right, it's not. It's it's more of a sur survivability type option. It's survivability yeah. for melee DPS. Yeah. Again, melee DPS. You want to go max damage, and you're giving up some of that max damage for survivability but without becoming a healer to do it. I mean, this stuff doesn't work on other people. There's not temporary well, it, hit points for all your group. This it's is, basically... This is just you. Yeah, you're, you're basically healing with temporary hit points instead of healing with, uh, you know, if you went like... Like you build like a melee cleric or something and you splash a bunch of cleric levels to get healing abilities and stuff. Um, yeah, I know. You, you're just kind of doing it with temporary HP instead. So, no, I think that's a good that's a good niche that doesn't exist in the game right now, really. I mean... What frenzy berserker? Like, frenzy berserker has some temporary hit points, but there's not really, as far as I can think of, really any niches like this in the game. Maybe I'm forgetting something, but in any case, yeah, I think I don't know warlock, but uh, yeah, there's not, warlock. Not yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we can move on uh, to the okay. next line here. So we're starting. Yeah, we're starting here on this enhancement. So spirit of the vampire lacerating blows your melee attacks with slashing or piercing weapons now have a 33, 66, or 100% chance to put a stack of bleed on the enemy. 
So yeah, I mean this seems fine. I mean bleed already isn't really that good anyways. Uh, this is a copy is... paste basically from what the rogue mechanic has, who does the same thing with the great crossbow. So this is just with your melee blows. So it's not it's just a flavor thing to work with your melee versus your crossbow. So that was it. Yeah, it's it's it, good at low levels and it dies at high levels. It's not worth anything. Right, high right. But, so yeah, yeah, it seems fine to me. Um uh, what's next? So next is unfortifying attacks. Your attacks now have a 10, 5, 10, 15 percent chance to bypass fortification. Might be a little bit low in the tree for that. I mean, that's pretty good. But uh yeah, I mean it's definitely something that's very useful, obviously. To get. I think I think this is good and I intentionally put a little bit low on the tree to encourage players again and anytime you want to make your product you have to think about we want this to sell because if not it's not going to happen so having this option oh this is great so anytime you've got a class who doesn't have it you might need it. just like people now go into falconry and take stuff in falconry just so they can bypass yeah enemy fortification. I, I think the bypass so, like, on falconry is like tier four i think tier yeah that's 50 percent. so yeah it's also a, yeah it's 50 percent. it's yeah. way higher this is this yeah. is lower it goes into 15 percent, and it's automatic you don't have to click anything for it to happen so there's like the trade-off it's it's a lower thing but it's like easier it just works yeah yeah it might be okay i think a lot of people would definitely be interested it's probably be the biggest thing people would splash for i mean other than the hp stuff but i think that would get balanced out but, but yeah it would be pretty attractive as a splash but we'll we'll continue uh the th Third enhancement in the second row here. Your we'll, opponent. We'll go. Oh, the, go I ahead. think you should go through the. Through, one second. There's there's another row over here that goes with the attack with bite. Oh, uh, okay. So do that row by itself, and first do all the things that are not connected to that row. You want to do oh, what this one? Stand alone. At the bottom over there, sneaky, a creepy. I think it's called or whatever. Creepy, this one. The first enhancement yeah. on the fourth row? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So how does that tie into the, the bleed? It doesn't... It, no, that one doesn't. That's it just it's, that, that's a standalone. You can see I also made the, the arrows on the enhancement tree so you can see how the chain goes from how it, how everything interconnects. So these are just... Oh, like okay. You're right. I was looking at... You're right. I was looking... Okay. I was looking at the, the wrong... Okay. I was looking at the wrong one. Go ahead. Yeah, so this is just like this. Uh, basically, every enhancement tree has got some kind of thing at the low level that allows you to add some kind of, you know, add a few action points to your uh, to your enhancement. So that was that. That was what creepy is about. Okay. Right? Yeah, that's pretty. That's really standard. Sorry, yeah, guys. That's I'm kind of standard. I've been clicking around. It's yeah. we're talking about yeah. now the fourth, uh, the first enhancement yeah. in the fourth row, the yeah. fourth column. I guess I should say. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Did you want to go? Problem, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's, it's nothing. Nothing special about it. It's just yeah. okay. So you want, you want to go left to right. Okay, and then yeah, toughness. Last one is just toughness. Yeah, hit hit points. This exists in many different trees. This is nothing new. Just put here also. So yeah, I, I don't think it's in tier one in any tree. I could be wrong. Uh, I, I know it's in tier. Is it pale master tier one? Yeah, okay. I just copied it from. It's an oh, okay. Existing thing. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, honestly, hit points is good. Um, I don't think we did the middle row here. Did you want to Yeah, so skip I guess this? we can do the middle row now. We'll do the whole okay. middle row as it goes up the tree. I'm sorry about the, like, the little bit of a confusion because there is a bit of delay between when I hear you and when I see it on stream. So Okay. Yeah, 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 there probably is. Fine, so Spirit of the Vampire, Vampire Bite. This is an active attack. That means you have to click on it. Like basically like trip or sunder or any of those attacks, cleave or whatever, all, all those attacks. So this is an attack and there's a whole bunch of things you can add to it, but you have to continuously click this. And when you hit it, basically it gives you back a bit of healing equal to the amount of damage you just did. So the more damage, the more healing you get. Um, yeah, I mean, so it seems it interesting. Off, uh, yeah, it starts off, it's basically 1d6. And it heals you for the same amount. And the amount of time it stays is one second per character level. And there's a cooldown on it. Who starts at 60 and then it goes down to 20 seconds. I was thinking the, the lowest tier should probably be 30. Just because if it wasn't, if it was 20, it could, la you know, it would lap itself. Because it's one second per character level. Let's see, last one second per character. It's okay for it to lap itself. But when will it lap itself? 
at level 30, 30 or level 20. Level, starting at level 21. As well, again, it's only 1d6. Uh, I mean, it's not, not yeah, that it, powerful. Even, yeah. even though it laps itself, it's still not really that powerful. It's a, This is a minor heal. This is not yeah, it's one, it's, yeah, 1d6 is not much. It's It doesn't really get much bigger. I mean, it, it, you'll see it increases, but it's not really so much for the healing. This is not meant to be a way to fully heal yourself. Again, this is like minor heals. Mm -hmm. I'm in trouble. I need to heal a few hit points. I need to run in and hitting is going to grant me some life back. This is just a core at the beginning. Later it gets better, but it's for the effects that you get versus the actual healing. This is not meant to heal you up. Okay, well, let's move on to the, the next one. Okay, the next enhancement, Lifesteal now lasts 33, 66, and 100% longer. Yeah, so if you would be at level 2, now it would last 4 seconds. Okay, like you, you would heal 1, like make sure I understand. 1d6 like, per second. Per second, so you would heal for like 4 seconds, 1d6 every second. Yeah. Okay. Again, it's not, it's, not, it's not extremely powerful, but it's a small amount of hit points, but you have to actually score the hit, and you have to run in and put yourself in danger to get that hit. So that's... Yeah, that's I mean, there's already vampirism stuff in games, so... Yeah, this is it's, yeah. it's fine. I, I, like I said, it's hard to get an idea of how much how much stronger or weaker this is compared to stuff already in game. But like it's anything, it would be tested. You actually have to do a active hit. I mean, you have to hit. click something for it to go off. Unlike the other stuff, you just your regular attack just triggers it. So here you have to run in, press your special attack mm -hmm. for it to work. Right. Well, do you want to go? Let's see to the right side yeah, here. Keep up the tree. No, keep up the tree. On up the tree. All okay. the arrows up. Yeah. Okay, there was an error to the side, though, is what I was asking. Yeah. Do you want to do that one first? Uh, that was... And I thought you did weakening that bite? Yeah, weakening bite. Yeah, so that's to the right in the tree, but it's connected yeah. to this ability. Yeah. So every tick of Vampire Lifesteal adds a stack of variability. I assume you meant vulnerability. Uh, vulnerability, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's already in the game. So vulnerability is like 1% more damage, I think, for each stack. Uh, again? I believe. Uh, vulnerability, I believe, is 1% more damage that the mob takes yes. for every stack. Yeah, you can, you, you, if you want to see it, you can, yeah, any, uh, you can get on a Thunderforged item, level 24. Yeah. Divine Crusader has that I, as well. So yeah, there's other, there's other ways you can get it. Yeah, it's that seems fine to me. Again, you have to remember that all these things only work when you actively hit. I mean, it's not just yeah. by swiping and, and it, you actually have to click on it to make it happen. Yeah, and that, I don't believe that stacks with, like, if other party members are using vulnerability on, like, the no, same raid boss. It only boss, goes up to 15, yeah, that's it. It doesn't stack. So, yeah, it seems that seems fine to me. Okay, I'll just continue up then. Uh, depleting Bite. Vampire Lifesteal now deals your opponent 1d4 random stat damage and affects you with the lesser restoration spell every tick. Did you explain what you were going for there? Yeah, so again, so this is increasing the functionalities of Bite. So this one attack you do, I don't want to have like 20 different attacks. You click one button and it should do should do the trick. But you're going to have to keep on spamming it. Then, you know, the, in best case scenario, you've got it every 20 seconds. You can run up and hit things. And every 20 seconds, you can click on this again. So also having another like, kind of like with Monk, where you have your special attack, who gives you restoration. So this is the same thing, staying in that same idea of you do damage and the same kind of damage you're doing also gives you a benefit so in this case you do some minor stat damage and get restoration that i was, was thinking that since it's a vampire theme restoration kind of for me it seems to not really fit it thematically um well that was why i call it spirit you know, of the vampire so you kind of we're taking, you're yeah. taking power away from somebody else again it only works if you ha if you actually hit that character mm -hmm. because if you don't hit him you're not getting it it's not you don't self-heal there's not some kind of magic you're not using key to heal yourself. And instead yeah. of random, maybe like strength instead. Don't vampires do normally do strength damage, stat damage in game? I believe. Um, like the mob. And also, I, I don't know. I, I I don't know for sure. Yeah. Um, I was running some orchard today and I got hit for con damage. So. Okay, maybe it's con I could be mixing that up. Okay. Yeah, that seems fine. So Sakura says. Um, super fun technicalities. The skills don't specifically mention melee attacks only, but like, yeah, Sakara, we might not, he might not have those in there right now, but that's the intent. So, 
it doesn't specifically mention that we don't mean this to be applicable to range builds or anything like that check it check the check the melee thing, the the bottom the core the um, this one yeah bite does it say there um i don't think so but no it doesn't but i think that's that's your intention though yeah but it's meant to it's meant to be melee attack yeah so it's melee attack only it was, it was meant to be melee attack and doesn't but, say here but i was thinking probably you should have it also that it's it has like its own animation kind of like you know Basically yeah, snapping. well, it's called vampire yeah. bite, right? It's called vampire yeah. bite. How do you bite with a <laughs> with a bow? You know, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. In any case, Sakura, yeah, he he meant to he meant to say uh, yeah he meant to say melee. So that's the intention. But we'll we'll swap back to I think we were done yeah, yeah. actually with depleting bite, so we can go I guess to the left. Yeah. Uh, vampire dread. Your opponent suffers from minus one to all stats for each stack of vampire life soul that currently has. It seems this one seemed a little bit um, like like it kind of duplicates the other one a little bit because instead of a random stat, this I guess this adds another minus one to all stats on top of that. Yeah, this goes together with that. While the other one is a effect that can keep on stacking, you keep on hitting for I don't know for con or whatever whatever the random stat happens to be. It just keeps on going deeper and deeper. And the other one is just an effect that it's, it goes away as soon as you, you know, stop attacking. So there's like a, there's a barbarian buff that you can get when you are, you're ranged, sorry, raged. You're standing next to things. Anything who's in your aura gets a minus two to all stats. Mm. So that's for free. Just standing next to things, they all get a minus two to their stats. This, you could stack up to a minus three because it stacks up three times. But again, you still have to keep on actively attacking for this to work. And it's only the single target that you hit. I mean, it will strike through so maybe more targets, but again, you're standing and actively making it. So, yeah. Yeah, it seems fine. So it's a like, bit of a debuff. Yeah, like stat damage isn't really that great usually in game, anyways. From you know, from what I can tell, just because a lot of mobs usually die pretty quickly, anyways. I guess it does make it easier for you to land your crowd control and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so when you get yeah, to the top, so of that the might... street, you'll see why being able to uh, whatever take down stats is more important. Right, lets you hit your stuns and blinds and whatever better. But uh, yeah, we'll continue, I guess, up now. So we're on the fourth row, the third from the left. So draining by each time you add a stack of vampire lifesteal to your opponent, you deal one negative level and affect yourself with the restoration spell. So yeah, this is like really good, beat really, really good deep buff tree. This is kind of like, it's funny, this is kind of the direction I wish they would take something like War Priest in, like a deep debuff focus tree, honestly. Um, but yeah, this seems cool. Um, one negative level, and you also get restore on yourself. Do you want to talk about the anything here? Well, I thought that there's no way for me pure melees to get like restoration unless they've got restoration pots. You basically get from the main bar event. You stack up like once a year, and that that's what you've got. If you want to play pure melee, I mean, this true like. I don't know, Hammer of Life, Epic Hammer of Life, if you happen to have that, so that's twice, two clickies. But other than that, you don't really have many options to use Restoration. So if you get stuck with a negative level because they debuffed you and they took off your Death War, now you're stuck. And all these things, like, they take out the engagement. They make it so it's not fun, and you're always dependent on somebody to, like, rebuff you. So having an option, to, yeah, I mean, again, you have that. Yeah, I mean, some of that is intended. Like, they want yourself. to encourage party play as well. But yeah, there's definitely a line. It's 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 debatable. Yeah, that's that would be very helpful in any case. To get Again, restored. the guys who want to play with a party wouldn't go this deep into the tree because they don't care about it, and they yeah. would just focus on pure. They wouldn't put a, a single point in this tree. Yeah, because there's not because a lot of all DPS. So it's for the people who don't want to be dependent on the party. So right. Again, this is giving the options. Yeah, and like people are noticing here, there's no like. There's, you're going to be losing DPS by taking this tree because there's no there's no critical multipliers here. There's no damage boost. No, not at all. You know, there's a little bit, like you reduce the fort here in tier one, but there's not really any DPS stuff here. There's no cleaves, you know, there's nothing like that. So there is a there is a. I didn't want it to cost. be that this tree would all of a sudden make your character way better than everybody else. Yeah. You have to sacrifice. If you're going into this tree... This is because you really decided you don't want to play with a party and you're not going to play with a party anyways, but at least you'll be able to play the game versus dying all the time. So Yeah, you'll be able to solo to on Elite them. or Hard or whatever and, and yeah, do really you well. You still don't have to like turn into a... You don't have to turn into a ranged caster or a healer to play it. This is another option. 
right. Okay. And I think, okay, the, we're at the top now, Vampire's Doom. This one's kind of, you want to explain this one? Because yeah. this one's kind of complicated. Well, it looks more complicated than it really is because it's a lot of text. Not, yeah, it's not really that complicated. Ba basically, really basically what it does yeah. Go ahead. is it gives you an option at an instant kill. And you don't have to see all this text. This doesn't really mean anything to you as much as, like, you try to land your attack. So there's three tiers to it. It either doesn't hit at all or it hits and slows them. And if they fail their save, the second save, it will turn them to stone. And if they fail the third save, they instantly die. So depending on how good your DCs are, you could make this to land and just right out, uh, right out just kill things. Or it won't happen kill them but instead of them you know worst comes to worst they'll just slow them or if your saves are if you're better you got better dc so might even turn into stone and if you're really great so you can kill them so that's basically what this is so it's kind of like a little uh it's a, it's a little complicated when you, when you read it like this but basically that's what hold it is. on let me uh yeah probably should move, move let your me camera let me top. turn my camera off just momentarily okay sorry guys it should be better because, yeah, my camera was blocking a lot of the text. So yeah. turn it off for a second. I'll, 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 just, I'll read the bottom now so you can print your camera back up in just a minute. So basically I made it to this three saves. You're going to have to make a reflex and a will and a fortitude save. So you're going to have to go through all the three options. So you can't, like, neglect one of them and then expect to have an instant kill. But if you do invest in all three of them, you should be able to do it. Now, I didn't want to force the build. It would have to be you have to, you know, invest in one specific skill. So I gave different options. So there's going to be one like physical skill, one arcane skill, and one social skill. That's what the different things are. So you see the reflex is going to have to have either balance, jump, or tumble. So you can have a build who runs, who goes all ba balance or jump or tumble, what, depending on how, however you want to set it up. You have the different options. And then the will would be, again, that would be like an arcane skill. Probably, let's say, if you're a pure fighter, so then for your reflex save, you'd probably have jump because you got tons of jump. And then for your will save, you'd probably be using UMD because what else are you going to do? You don't need concentration to perform. And your fortitude save, you'd probably have intimidate. So if you'd be like the tank, that would be the route that you'd be going. And if you'd be some kind of bard, so probably you'd have balance because you're a single-handed fighter and perform. And I don't know, maybe you're bluff or diplomacy, depending on how you build it. So there's different options. You don't have to be like, if I want this to work, I have to play a specific build. But you still have to invest really good if you want to have an instant kill every time you activate it. So would it be doing, like, when when you use this, would, would, it, would it be basically rolling against all three saves? Yes, you'd have to roll okay. against all three saves. It might and be... It's only, it's only one time when you attack. So yeah. it doesn't go like every tick. It's when you, when you click on it, it will roll at once. Well, maybe it could be a multi-selector instead to where you can kind of pick which one, since, you know, you're going to be going after one anyways. Maybe you could just well, pick... I made it tiered, so really you're going after all. You're, all you're trying to go to the end. You're trying to see as deep as you can go. Ultimately, you want to kill it, but if you can't, so at least you'll stone him, and if not, at least you'll slow him. So it's like there's different tiers for it. So yeah, multi selector is a different is a different route. Having it so you pick one, and there's many things I didn't think about that before. I, I done it wasn't it wasn't balanced for that. But yeah, yeah. I, well, So what's the ideas on the the basically the saves being based on your skill because I don't are there other um, abilities in game that use skills for the DCs? Yeah, tons of different things. You have okay. your DCs plus it adds your skills to it, different things that you're usually they're after different things like stuns and stuff. But I remember seeing things that are balanced off your off your skill. So it's a random one D twenty plus a skill. That that's how you're uh, I don't know how high the base is, but yeah. So okay, each monster is different. It, it's it just it seemed like to me like I, I know some skills can get really high. Like can't can't you like some taking builds get like 150 plus intimidate? Yeah, you can. Yeah, so you would have well, like but, on average you'd well, be. You, you have to get through all three layers for it to work. So if that character mm -hmm. happens to have a oh, okay. crazy jump, so he'll for sure land it. But then how is he going to get through the second layer if he doesn't have a great concentration or perform or UMD? I mean, he might have a good UMD, he might have 50, 60, I don't know how high it is, but it's not going to be good enough to land it every time consistently. So again, you have to get through all three layers. Oh, okay. And, I wasn't catching yeah, that. So, so you can't, so, okay. So if you, you know, so if you have a really good intimidate skill or whatever, you still have to, they have to, if they make the reflex or the will before that, you don't even get to the fortitude. Save. Yeah, he just pointed out. Jake just pointed out. I remember seeing this. It was, I think, it's in the Fates, not not Fate Singer. It's in. Fascinating. Well, it's one of the bars in Hammond. Okay. Have to, it adds your skill to your stun. Oh, uh, okay. 
I forgot Washington, about that. Maybe. I don't remember. Yeah. So there are some. Yeah, I remember seeing this before. I don't remember. I didn't remember where I saw it. But again, if you wanted, if you wanted to go through all these, I mean, yes, yeah, true. I'm sure there's lots of characters who have one of these skills maxed out. So if they ever get to that point, they're definitely going to pass it. If you're some kind of character who uses strength, you're for sure going to pass the first layer because your jump's going to be sky high. Will you get through the second layer? Will you be able to turn everything to stone to be able to use your intimidate to instantly kill them? So it depends on how you build it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Again, there are not many characters who are going to want to go to tier five in this tree. They might, but if you do, so here's an option. There's, I didn't want it to be that if you go all in in this tree, you can no longer have any really cool way to instantly kill things. And because you don't have some crazy multiplier, or there's a whole bunch of other things you have to well, sacrifice. You to would get. have to fit in three skill items, basically. If you're gonna spec for high DC on this, right? Yeah, that's to... why I made sure there was yeah. lots of options. So, so that's the take away. Options, so. Yeah, so you'd have to fit in a balance item and a concentration item and an intimidate item. You want to get well, like all you, three, if, or if, or if some other combination. Path, yeah. yeah, you pick your path basically, depending on what kind of. skill... If you're a rogue, if you're a fighter, if you if you're a bard, depending on what you're playing, I don't know what, whatever melee character you're playing that uses it. So you would have to pick your route, but you would have different options. Again, you would have to max them out if you really wanted it to land all the time. Okay, gotcha. And you can only use it once every twenty seconds. Again, it's the same. It's it you it works off the bite attack. Okay, let me turn my camera back on. We'll switch to the next the next thing here. Okay, so oh, okay, so let's skip to. We already did creepy here on the right. I don't think we did. Did we do? Yeah, we did this. I'm wondering if we did. Oh, we didn't do on the second column the fourth and fifth enhancements here. Do you want to go ahead and do those next? Yeah, sure. So okay, so this is guys. This is this enhancement right here. So the little the skull here. So the fourth um, enhancement in the second column. So no mercy, you deal an additional 10, 20, 30 additional damage to helpless opponents. So, you know, this is in a lot of other other trees, so yeah, this helpless is a damage. This, this is straight up a copy-paste from uh, Falconary. This exists yeah. already. Just, if you wanted to get that from Falconary, but now you can't because you want to spend all your points here, so yeah. there you go. So it's something. So you have some DPS stuff in here. I mean, maybe some of it needs to go in the name of balance, but, you know, it's it's something. So, you want to oh, be able to take both trees. Nobody has that many points. Yeah, it's, t it's tier four. Yeah. So, you know. okay, let's go up. So this one's interesting. So bloody power. So this is the tier five. Each time you kill an opponent, you're healed HP equal to your level. So that would be, I mean, that would be super attractive. A lot of builds, I think. I assume that would scale with... It's um, kind of replacing the one that Barbarian has because yeah. Barbarian has things that are similar to this. And if you're giving up your tier five over there, so you need some kind of thing to get it over here. Um, yeah, I, it's not I, crazy H, but I mean, think about this in endgame. Yeah. Uh, it, it encourages you to run after trash mobs and try to get the kill on them to get that bit of HP. But still, 30 HP is not breaking the game. It, it's no, it's not. Bit, but, but it encourages you to get those just to finish off the kill, you know, go after and oh, I'm running and low on HP. So if I hit things, I get HP. And if I kill things, I also get HP. That's just another way to encourage you to also try to like finish off the trash because if you just go on the left it doesn't really encourage you to kill things just to hit things mm -hmm. and if you have some mob who's stunned you might want to change to a weaker weapon and just hit him so you can stack up and hit points versus trying to kill him so here's something else who encourages you also to try to like clean up the trash and kill it because every time you kill things you also heal a little bit so that was that yeah i, I think that makes perfect sense that's a good idea because you do want to be encouraged to actually finish stuff off and not just hit stuff so yeah all right so i think what do we have left here we, we did a we creepy. got the stuff on the right there's a few changes yeah on the right. i don't think we can just go up the we'll go up on the, the now we're on the fourth um fourth column we'll just go up the top here so you've got yeah. some slas so this is the third ability in the fourth column uh, mass yeah. invisibility sla so you know not a lot to say there but that would be you know nice little perk if you're running through a uh you know, you're doing the first uh, section of Lost at Sea or something. You know, invisibility is already available in a lot of different ways. Yeah, but it's it, already be, on clickies and stuff. It's on but clickies. Rather than having to farm out some item or something, yeah, just have it. Yeah, it's it's 
would be nice to it's have. It's behind your camera, but basically all it says is... is oh, shoot, is it? Yeah. I can turn my camera yeah, off again or move you my camera. You don't have to. It's just, it's, it's, it's just a regular spell. It's nothing nothing special about okay. it. Okay, yeah, guys. Above it. Yeah. Well, it's a yeah. precursor to what comes above it. Yeah, yeah. they don't really need to see it, I guess. Just mass invis invisibility, SLA. Um, okay, next is... I'm going to go ahead and just turn my camera off because <laughs> it's hiding all of these. Okay. So, guys, for the last one, as you can see, it's just mass invisibility, SLA. So the next one is where we get into some more interesting stuff. Um, mass Blur as a SLA. I don't think that exists in game, does it? No, it does not. Yeah. No, that didn't exist. So It's yeah. self-centered. You can't that, cast it on somebody else. You hmm. cast it on yourself, and it's an AoE. Right, but it's a Mass Blur, so you know if you're buffing yeah. before a raid, everyone would get it. I mean, that, that, that would be a very, very attractive spell to have. It's more importantly for people who want to cast it on things who are not other players who can cast themselves. So you've got NPCs or you've got hirelings and pets and all yeah. other things like that. So you could cast it and just get everything around you. So you don't have to like individually cast on each one. I mean, I, I think most people tend to have blur already like in their gear set somewhere at endgame. If not, something better like displacement or lesser displacement. But I still think it would be pretty attractive yeah, especially that's why, that's why i said hirelings yeah. and uh, and you know npcs mainly this is something that uh, if you're a melee caster you might a melee sorry melee dps you might not have a way you might not have clickies i mean for this to be able to cast on other things yeah um, that's what this is for no that would be very very interesting um, I don't know about the next one though. So lesser uh, mass displacement as an S SLA because they they actually changed this spell. Uh, what was it like several years ago? Because displacement used to be used to have the ability to to cast that on other players, and they made that self only some time ago. I don't know if if SSG would like that. I don't I don't think they would do it. So yeah, I see I see why not. Uh, the thing is, I think most players have already passed a point. I mean. There's so many players who now have ways to use clickies and cast blur on themselves. Basically, everybody's got the displacement. Well, so many people have got staffs from green steel, people crafting clickies and everything. So people have got displacement all the time. And the more time passes, there's already items that give you plus 25 displacement, who's mm -hmm. fixed. So they're adding this stuff all the time, making more and more displacement and making it more and more available. So again, this was mainly for like NPCs. That was really where. Okay. If you have to do any kind of a quest and you have somebody and you're you could I failed quests many many times because I had some NPC who I couldn't protect as a melee DPS. There's no way to do it, and your hireling is just not good enough. Mm -hmm. So having well, some kind of defensive thing. And if that's the intention, you know, they could always modify it, make it uh, like, I don't know, make it like hireling only or something. Of course, that would make it not very attractive, but I don't know. I mean, I know it's funny because I know uh, I remember SSG talking about the the displacement clickies and to the shroud and how the they they said some time ago they said that like that was one of the regrets with design because they made it so available that like now when you go in game like everything has true seeing like bosses and stuff. It's because yeah, they went like because it's like they went overboard years ago of making displacement like too available. So and then they they did do that nerf back where displacement used to be. Uh, you used to be able to cast that on players, but now you can only do it on self. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think SSG would go for this, but um, but it might, it might be okay. It is tier five, so. Well, that was another thing. I yeah. Was I made it so you really have to commit if you want this thing to work. Mm -hmm. But if you decide you're going going all in on this tree, so fine. So you got one defensive tool that will allow you, you know, make your life less miserable when you, yeah. I, and I don't know what PC dies and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. And, I don't know what the cooldown would be, or it would probably be a longer, longer cooldown, and maybe a well, to activate short. It? Yeah, or to, or how long would it last? Well, it lasts basically like regular display. Flame, I think it goes yeah. for half a minute plus six, plus six okay. seconds per level, something like that. I um, mean, you can make it expensive. This, this is like a balancing act. I didn't even want to get into it. So I yeah, I, I know. I know. <laughs> it would be my really default, difficult. My default price would be whatever the base price is plus 10 points, because that's basically what they do on everything else. So, but that probably is not balanced. So I don't care if it costs 100 spell points. Again, think about who's casting it. If you're a melee DPS, you don't really have 100 spell points just hanging around. So you must have like an augment or something. The, the, you don't really have that automatically. Yeah. So there's definitely other ways to balance it. Okay. We'll move on. I think we're almost, we're about done here. 
think we already did this, toughness. Yeah. We've got what? The, yeah, the last we've, things on the right. Yeah, we've got so these four enhancements on the right. So, uh, vampire apprentice one, your hirelings pets and summons now add bleed on attack. So I, when I saw this initially, I was thinking maybe since you have some of these enhancements here, as we'll get to that boost pets and stuff, maybe give this tree a pet. I mean, what do you think about that? I think that I was already designing a whole tree for pets, but that's a t something for a different video. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Because I saw this and I was thinking, well, maybe they should get like a a wolf or something. Um, yeah. Well, I was I was trying to think of a build. I was trying to make a build that would be viable, that would use pets as a legitimate thing, and there isn't really a way to do it with multi-classing. As soon as you multi-class, your pet basically loses tons of levels. So I was trying to think about different alternatives and. Many different ideas, whatever. I'm not going to start spoiling the next idea. Okay, okay. I was thinking I have an entire tree dedicated to pets. But this is a small thing that I thought was nice to add in and could be useful, again, for your hirelings or for your pets or for whatever you've got on you, just giving it something that would fit with the theme of this this tree and go here. Yeah, if you're like already a class that gets it like Artificer or something where you already have a pet, you would get a benefit from it, so... I mean, not everyone would take it, because if you're a fighter or something, you're not going to have a pet, so maybe you wouldn't take this, but maybe you want to take it for hirelings. But Yeah. I do think pets and summons and stuff should be probably a little better. I mean, they shouldn't be like, it shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be able to go in like Reaper Dungeons and just destroy them with pets and summons and stuff, but, you know, they probably should be a little bit more viable than they are. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, we'll continue. Let's not spoil that next tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, we'll stop talking about it. <laughs> okay, uh, so the next enhancement, your hirelings, pets, and summons now have vampirism on attack. I think that's cool. That's a good idea because yeah. it's annoying to have to heal hirelings and pets and stuff. So that seems perfectly fine to me. Yeah. Maybe it would help. Maybe that's a way to help with the AI just because sometimes they're, like hirelings are really dumb and they just won't heal themselves. Yeah. So yeah, that's well, they, instead of instead of healing, they're attacking. So let's make it so that their attack heals. <laughs> there you go. If you can't make they, them smart, if you can't make them that. smarter, just make them being dumb like work out better. So yeah. All right. They're doing it anyways. <laughs> yeah. Make it work. So, okay. All right. Uh, two left. So blink when you are attacked. There's a five percent chance that you will become invisible for five seconds. So there's always stuff like this in game, like the Maybar cloak. Yeah, Bard has it. Like, yeah, uh, Bard has an ability like this, uh, similar to this. Mm -hmm. I think it's for six seconds. Uh, it's a multi-selector inside of, um, oh, I can't remember, Spellsinger maybe? I'm not Either sure. That, I, 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 know, I know the Cloak of Night has this uh, you invisibility You can also make proc. it an augment. Uh, mm. you can, the, clo the one from Strahd, the Cloak that comes from Strahd, you can turn that into an augment. Mm, okay. Mm. So yeah, that seems fine. I mean, it's pretty nice to lose because it's nice having invisibility invisibility proc because then you just you lose aggro right so yeah basically that yeah so even if you're just you're you know you uh make yourself you not invisible a few... get punished immediately for it right so you can lose aggro so that's that's nice on characters who are not tanks um let's okay the last thing is vampire phase you become invisible for 20 seconds and summon a pack of six black wolves equal to your level to fight you or fight for you for one minute. So why six black wolves? <laughs> uh, basically, that's what happens with vampires. You attack okay. vampires, and after a certain amount, they're like vampire bosses. They like poof, they disappear, and then you get a whole bunch of black wolves. I don't know why. That yeah, no, I just I just saw it. Fault, not my fault. <laughs> they did this. Eh? I, I thought you know, maybe go, like go run church in the cult, and that's exactly what happens. You hit the boss or any of the other bosses, and yeah. like the uh, under the vampire bosses at the sure. end chains of a uh, necropolis. The exact same. They, you hit them and then they disappear and summon wolves. Oh, like, okay. I don't know. Okay. So this is like it's, to okay. go with the spirit of the vampire thing. You get to do the same trick. Okay. You get to summon some wolves. That's cool. I was thinking maybe bats or something would be more thematic, but now that you mention it, I guess there are. I don't remember, well, but I guess there are. Effects, when you go invisible, it would have that bats effect. Yeah. But that doesn't really do anything. This right, right. An actual thing. It summons monsters. Again, it's only for, it's only for one minute. I don't think. It's kind of, it goes together with your escape. You escape and you click this and yeah, do a bit of DPS. Well, and this is kind of giving you a pet sort of as well. Um, so if you don't have, a, yeah. your class doesn't have a pet, you know, taking these other enhancements would give you some benefit. I assume that the benefits below would, yeah, of course they would yes, flow they would, into this, they would, they would make your wolves yes. better. So yeah, that's cool. 
I think that's a pretty cool idea. So I think that's all. Do you have any like final thoughts on the tree or anything like that? Um, most of it. Uh, well, there's there's different things in this tree. There's some things where they're a given that there's no reason why they shouldn't work. Some things over here are definitely they need to be tested before. And there's some filler who are just uh, you know put in there because uh, every tree's got some kind of a little bit of filler. Well, basically allows you for flavor, but not really the core. Um, overall, I think that this tree is meant to allow melee DPS be a more viable option, and it wants it, it's supposed to keep you in the melee DPS zone. That means rather than every time you take damage or you get hurt or something, you have to run away and try to heal yourself. This is trying to encourage you to stay in the action and try to continue to attack and make it so you don't like instantaneously die. So. If you're doing good and you're keeping up your DPS, you should have enough hit points that when suddenly you get swiped by some kind of Doom Reaper, you don't die all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. You still can take like one or two hits, even if you're not the tank. So yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's basically what this tree is for. I think that's some kind of temporary, because I think that the really compelling thing would be all the temporary hit points um, from the tree. Not that the other stuff isn't good too, but I think that would be kind of the compelling thing. So I think a niche of having, you know, an. Uh, I guess a melee character just could rely more on temporary hit points to survive rather than regular hit points sounds like a pretty cool role that isn't really fleshed out in DDO. So yeah, it seems it seems pretty interesting. Does anyone else in anyone in chat have any questions for me or Outbar or anything you want to add or anything you want us to talk about again or anything like that? If you do, just you know, type it in chat in the next few minutes because we'll probably be ending the stream pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, I guess for me overall, I mean, it, it, it does, like I said, it does seem like it fills out that niche, but like we said, I, I have some balance, like concerns with it, but you know, that stuff would have to go through testing and such. And I'm just glad yeah. that I don't have the job of having to do that. Yeah. I don't mind testing it, but I don't have the option to. So well, yeah, I mean, you really, this is the kind of stuff well, I love doing. I love testing yeah. builds and building and creating things and running them. Lamania is my favorite, but. Until they, yeah, well, until it shows up and I can test it. I, maybe I someday it. they'll let uh, players start modding the game or doing something to that effect. Well, yeah, they can they can open up a test server mm -hmm. exactly for stuff like that. Or put put some tools in to let us do something similar. Yeah. Level design also is one of those things. I do modding on the side, but I can't do like a mod. I wish I could give you like a quest that I built that would go for DDO that you could play out as a preview. That would be really fun and awesome yeah. for me. But and that's really, I'm not going to start creating all the textures and all the assets from zero just to put it together in Blender so I can show you like a mock-up. I, oh, I, I need oh, an yeah. engine that I can... Yeah, that would be tons of work. But no, I've seen other players talk about that, how they would like love to see DDO open this game to, to modding. Or I'm sure there is a lot of players who would put in tons of time to, to build levels if DDO would just allow it. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Well, it can open up a whole new aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. Being able to... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that. You have games that they have a... Where you can make build levels. Again, that doesn't, doesn't affect the rest of the game. I mean, you would have a, a whole new group of people come to play DDO if DDO allowed you to build levels. Not right. that these levels meant anything to the progression of everybody else playing DDO, but just for them, they could play levels. And if somebody makes a really cool level, so DDO can just do copy-paste and put it in the game. Right. I mean, think of it, or even mod it to fit whatever they want. Well, they free game designing. Well, they do. They do hire people from time to time. <laughs> if you're interested in applying, I think you're you're yeah. kind of half a world away though, right? Well, yeah. now that COVID happened, apparently people can work from home. I mean, I thought you could do that before, but nobody believed me. So now, well, I, I now work from home. Everybody knows you can work from home. Yeah, like well, we've always been able to. Well, not everyone, but a lot of jobs have been able to for a long time. It's just kind of the I don't know. At least where I work, a lot of the philosophies of people in charge just don't seem to not want to do that. But hey, during COVID, where at least I'm fortunate enough to be able to work from home, so I understand where you're coming from there. Well, uh, you know, I don't see anyone in chat chiming in, so I guess it's about time to yeah. end the stream, unless you had anything else to add. Well, I wanted to say thank you very much. I mean, I appreciate you going, putting all this time. This this project started like, you know, any good project. I started on pen and paper at the end of 2020. I was writing down notes and stuff. And then eventually I put it on a folder. My folder is actually on 
January 4th. That's when I started this project officially on my computer, starting to have, you know, starting to write down things. That's when it started. And then I dragged my legs and did a few, you know, a few minutes here, a few minutes there. I had so many things still pumping out the videos every week and I, I just didn't get around to it. Eventually I closed it up and finished it. Then they sent, then I sent it to Axel to do, and then took more time until we did it. So yeah, it well, took a really long time until we got it to go. To, yeah, yeah to guys, it. Albar put in vast majority of the work on mm -hmm. this. I mean, this is his ideas. I mean, he, he did the art on the trees and everything, you know, these are, these are his ideas. So guys, he makes really good videos. So if you don't, aren't already subscribed to Albar, he's just Albar DDO on YouTube. You can go check it out. I mean, I know you do a lot of quest walkthroughs and stuff like that. So if you want resources on, say like, how do I solo this quest or, or whatever, I mean, he's really good reference for that. Yeah, I like, I like doing a lot of quests that are not meant to be soloed. I love soloing those quests. So if you can think of a quest that shouldn't be soloed, there's probably a guide of, you know, how to solo Zoriat Siphon or stuff like that, you know. All the different quests in Acropolis were not meant to be soloed because you need a party for them. So, and you just yeah, did a video the other got... day on the egg hunt event, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, oh. that was an opportunity that I just saw. No, nobody else posted posted a video about it. So I was like, I guess I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, guys, I think that's it. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I know I don't live stream hardly at all. It's like once every year, <laughs> if that's. But maybe I will do more if people like this it seems like you know a decent number of people showed up so maybe i will consider you know maybe yeah, doing we'll see, more we'll maybe me, me, maybe yeah maybe we'll do another stream in the future or something but well, all I right guys more ideas. yeah I've, I've since we've talked initially i've came up with a whole bunch of a whole new <laughs> roster of ideas tons of ddo items and a whole bunch of other little tricks and whatever another enhancement tree i've been working on something was more in line well we hinted already before talking about pets and stuff so yeah or even if you know we we, we just talk we, maybe we could do one in the future just talking about you know what's going on in the game and whatever i mean mm -hmm. there's a lot of situations where there's tons of stuff to talk about i mean it's kind of not there is a preview out right now so there's, there's some stuff to talk about and i already did a video on that and everything but um there's you know there's times in the game where you could we, I, I could get with someone another player and just we could talk for like hours Whenever they come out with major passes and stuff, so yeah, sounds yeah. okay to me. I mean, okay, guys, talking well, to somebody who likes DDO about the other sounds like it was like a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, I'll well, let you finish then. Yeah, well, that's gonna be it for the stream, guys. Thanks everyone for showing up. I will see you next time, and uh, thanks for joining. See you, everyone. Thank have a good you. night. Bye bye.